Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I am delighted to be talking with someone who is well-established, very familiar with the world of comics creating, writing, editing, and that is Mr. Tom Pyre. Tom, thank you for jumping in. May I call you Tom? Yeah, you said my name right, too. Oh, we try. Absolutely. I, I've heard it somewhere, I'm sure, on a podcast or something like that. Um, so glad that I nailed it and didn't even ask before I hit record. <laughs> Win-win. Uh, you've created in the worlds of uh, DC Comics, Marvel Comics, uh, Hoi Comics, and you currently have a new project that's coming out that I know will be a bit of our focus. But I typically ask about this thing that you and I both love of comics. Uh, what makes comics unique for you as a, as a creator, as a storyteller? I think uh, uh, Danny O'Neill used to say that comics is a language you have to learn young mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because he would deal with people who really hadn't grown up reading comics and their, let's say their flow might be off. Um, and uh, just stumbling into comics when I needed it at a very tender age made it just the perfect thing. I mean, the, the combination of words and pictures, you put them together and it's like dynamite. And yeah. um, and the, the, the sequence, you know, the sequential art that Will Eisner used to talk about, the relationship to time. And, um, and of course, uh, the characters, just the larger than life overblown characters. And I, I'm of a sensibility that, uh, I don't really do a lot of work trying to make things more believable. Mm -hmm. I think if you make a great long lasting superhero believable, you're kind of taking something away from them. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I love the characters. I love the form. I love the medium. And like I said, I got, I got to it uh, when I was six years old and, and it really was a help. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something powerful about storytelling and about connecting with people around stories even mm -hmm. uh, and getting to talk about stories that you love. Um, what what kinds of stories as an author and creator are you drawn to tell? Well, you know, I I just put down believability, but I like the I like the characters' interiors and their reactions to be believable. And I, I think about what they might know and what they don't know. Yeah. And in any given moment and um that's the most important thing to me it's just the people in the story i got to the you know when i was like a monthly marvel and dc reader i, I got to the point probably in my 20s where i would just skip the fight scenes mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> even though those are the things those are the those things. are the things they and make it to the movies they have uh, to be in there and uh, <laughs> it's not that fight scenes are and I like them in the movies. They're not terrible. Their fight scenes are not terrible. But, you know, uh, back then, if you'd seen one, you'd seen them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and um, of course, you have to care about who's in the fight, first and mm -hmm. foremost. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. Um, curious about the collaboration that you currently have with Jamal Eigel, and that is The Wrong Earth. Uh, mm -hmm. Dead Ringers, curious about that and how that has come to be. It's been wonderful. Jamal is such a talented and hardworking and serious person in in terms of this. He's a very nice, sweet person in real life, but when you put the page in front of him, he becomes like an unstoppable engine of creation. Mm -hmm. And um so we're on the same page about a lot of things. We love a lot of the same things. And I always, Jamal will be sick of hearing this, but I always <laughs> compare his level of art and commitment to like um, George Perez on Titans. It's like he's oh, all yeah. the way into it and it shows. And he, he, you know, I, I came up with the idea first, but he improved it so much mm -hmm. that um, it would not not be this good a comic without him. Any um, particular teaser for the book that you'd like to mention for folks that might not be familiar with it? Sure. This is the uh, third 
we had like two and a half volumes of it before this. And so this is the big number three. And it's um, the first volume. We had a uh, sort of comics code era flag salute and Boy Scout mass crime fighter mm -hmm. um, swap Earths and be uh, they swapped Earths not willingly. They were trapped uh, with um, a later version of himself, who's like a, a violent stick it to the man type hero post comics code. But right. they're both the same. They're both the same hero. It's just from different points in the history of comics. And so the 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 uh, grim and gritty one has to live on a campy world and the campy one has to live on the grim and gritty world. And uh, it's one of the favorite things I've ever done. And the second one, they got trapped together on a third earth. It was a very unpleasant place. And it was the first time they'd met. And, and you know, these are not two versions of the same person who would choose to spend time together. Mm -hmm. And in the third one, which is what this is, uh, Dead Ringers, uh, all the major characters are trapped on the campy earth and trying to share it. And it's very quickly, it, it looks like uh, earth is not big enough for both of them. <laughs> love that. Well, and I love that play playfulness with, kind of the stories that can be told in comics because comics is one of those things that can be for adults or kids or everybody in between. And mm -hmm. uh, definitely interesting to think about the comics code authority and some of the ways that that's kind of had some impact on the kinds mm -hmm. of stories that people tell. Yeah. It, you know, everyone who kind of reads the uh, comics code half of our book thinks of um, the Adam West Batman and mm. they can't be blamed for it, but, the Adam West Batman was a pretty accurate report of pretty much every superhero comic that came before it and during it. So uh, it's really a whole era that we're that, that we're representing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and fun to bring those worlds together and let them collide a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't take sides. They yeah. uh, <laughs> they both have their points. Yeah. Um, so you said Jamal is, uh, is a friendly person, a wonderful collaborator, curious mm -hmm. about kind of the, the process that the two of you go through as you're coming up with these stories and, uh, getting ready to share them with the world. Well, J Jamal's, uh, contribution to the story is major contributions happened early, like, um, it's Dragonfly is the is the gritty guy, and Dragonfly Man is the uh, campy guy, and mm -hmm. and it was uh, I had I had it as something else, and it wasn't nearly as good, and 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 Jamal brought Dragonflies into it, which is really huge and major, and um, so a lot of the stuff you know when we were laying the bones for this, I, we'll talk. He is really like he's he doesn't try to write this for me, and I don't try to draw it for him. <laughs> and uh so but but we'll discuss things and he'll but but i'll write a full script and send it to him and he's he's been pleased with him so far apparently that is good always yeah. good yeah and i i've read the first couple and uh just struck by the creativity and um it, it seems to be a fun world to inhabit and, and something fun in the world of comics that celebrates comics and it is a comic as well thank you I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we have time. Uh, we, we've been pretty brisk, so I think we're actually doing good on time as far as questions and all. Um, so I'll tuck one in here if you like, and then we can sure. sort of wrap up with the final official question. And and so the question is, as you look back on your career, I, I know a lot of folks might know you for particular titles. Um, any collaborations, any experiences that have been especially positive oh sure sure well that you know uh, the uh the ones i've done at ahoy particularly raw earth are a high point mm -hmm. um, and uh um i worked with greg scott who i think is a great artist on high heaven and um uh alex uh alan robinson sorry on uh, penultimate which was its own thing yeah and uh going back uh 
to DC. It was a real treat to do Our Man with Rags Morales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and I did, uh, I wrote Legion of Superheroes for like five years and we had a really bunch of great people attached to that. And um, uh, so it's, you know, it's been, I've been very lucky. A lot of it's been really tremendous. Yeah, yeah, certainly a, a mark on the industry, and uh, Our Man is is definitely one of those titles. And I believe you've worked on Captain Ginger as well. And uh, that's uh, Stuart Moore and Jim uh -huh. Brigman, but we published that. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. So my name's in the book, so I'll I'll take that. <laughs> Absolutely, you you are part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> my my part in that process was uh, staying out of the way. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, so final official question, and we can of course hit anything that we've missed, and that is what currently has your creative attention? Uh I'm I would guess it's this third book, but anything that you want to talk about in terms of next steps is of course welcome. And where readers can learn a little bit more about the wrong earth. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. We just had a couple really exciting announcements. Um we're hoping we that we at Ahoy have our like biggest year yet because we've got um, a series by uh, Garth Ennis and Jason Burroughs called mm -hmm. Babs, which is a uh, barbarian comedy. Babs is is a, uh, a, a metal clad female barbarian. Yeah, and uh, she's very funny. It's a hilarious book, and, and the storytelling's beautiful, and. Uh, the other exciting one is um, Toxic Avenger, our first licensed comic. Yes, yeah. Uh, it'll be by Matt Boers and, and and Fred Harper, and it's it's shaping up wonderfully. And it's gonna. We've never gone to market with any characters anyone's ever heard of, <laughs> <laughs> so this will be a first, and we're really hopeful that uh, it'll be a success. Yeah. And, um, and we've got one starting next month that uh, Sarah Litt is the editor of. And uh, that's called Dead Weights by Tyrone Finch and Sebastian Perez. And uh, it's um, a really affecting human funny story of two supervillain henchmen who decide they don't want to do it anymore. Wow. And uh, uh, I love it. it. That comes out next month. Dead weights. You have a full slate. And uh we do. yeah, looking forward to seeing what Matt Boers does with Toxic Avenger because of course Justice Warriors is, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um so curious to see that. And anytime Garth Ennis's name is on something, I'm always curious about that as well. Exactly. We have Toxic Avenger because Matt loves it so much. He grew up on the animated cartoon, The Toxic Crusaders. And, oh, yes, yes. And he actually is the one who made the first step toward us acquiring it. And uh, because he was just so hot to have this in his life. <laughs> awesome. 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 Well, uh, I appreciate the creativity. I appreciate all of the work, um, particular web spaces, places where people can go to learn a little bit more and kind of follow along. We have uh, an Ahoy newsletter you can subscribe to. It's an email newsletter. Um, uh, it's, if I remember, it's bit.ly slash news Ahoy. Nice, nice. And um, but it's a in every one of our letter pages or editor's note pages that that address is there. That's the best place to learn things. We're still on like X and Twitter, X slash Twitter and Blue Sky and Instagram and uh, Facebook, and um, you can find us if you look. And there's a website, uh, comicsahoy.com. Fantastic. Well, I'll, I'll be sure and link all of those. Thank you. Um, so that people can connect. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to share before we close out? No, no, it's just, uh, uh, I, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about myself as always. Absolutely. Anytime, anytime. It's an open invitation. <laughs> so glad Thanks. to have you back anytime to talk Ahoy and other things. Thank you. And if you're stuck for a guest, give me a call. Well, wonderful. I appreciate that. Thank you mm -hmm. so much.
Great. Glad to talk anytime and, and a pleasure to share about the wrong earth and uh, all of the wonderful creating that you're doing. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much.